Hi, this is Joel Walsman, CEO, Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today, we're downtown Indianapolis in a 4,000 square foot, four story house, and we're just getting ready to wrap this up. Tomorrow's the last day, it's being listed, and I wanna walk you through a ton of code requirements specifically relating to code minimum receptacle spacing. I've just been reviewing the code. There's no way that any one person can keep all the requirements of the code top of mind. I do want you to memorize all the frequent flyers, everything you use on a daily basis, and I want you to learn eventually how to use the code book to fill in all the rest. So let me walk you over here. In all living spaces, kitchens, parlors, dens, recreation rooms, bedrooms, the code requires minimum receptacle spacing. And that constitutes um, language like this. Measured along the wall, that's around inside and outside corners, not diagonally, but along the wall, at the base of the wall, within every six feet of wall space, there must be at least one 120 volt receptacle for general use. So right here, within six feet of the start of this wall, because cabinets interrupt us, this is not wall space. Within six feet of the start of this wall, we have our first receptacle. And then extending from there, within 12 feet, we have our second receptacle. And that means that no point along the length of the wall between receptacles one and two is over six feet, because that's the min maximum distance from wall space in the living spaces I referenced to the nearest receptacle. So that means six feet to the first receptacle is a maximum, 12 feet to the second receptacle is the maximum. And that continues along the length of the wall all the way around the perimeter of the room. Now we're gonna get into lots of exceptions. I wanna talk about a couple here. One, if you have fixed panels, actually right over here, take a look at this. Fixed panels and doors. So this entire wall right here is movable. And because all of these panels move and none of them are fixed, it means that this is not considered wall space. If it was wall space, if these two center panels were fixed, then there would be no way to locate a receptacle in them or on them, obviously. So the code would require a floor receptacle within 18 inches of the wall, floor receptacle less than 18 inches of the fixed panels. Every wall space, fixed panel, railing, um, anything of that sort, every fixed wall space, two feet or greater in the living space must be served by a receptacle outlet that meets the code requirements. This, even if this were poured concrete, there would have to be provisions prior to pouring the slab for an in-concrete floor receptacle. Now that floor receptacle must be listed and rated for that purpose. A floor receptacle is very different than a wall receptacle. The cost is about $45 higher per unit, um, and that's because it has to have a floor rated cover, something that's able to bear weight and protect the insertion of foreign objects. Whether those are liquids, whether that's children's fingers, toys, anything of that nature, furniture legs must be able to protect, the cover must be able to protect the receptacle from those foreign objects. Here we have wall space along this wall and along this wall. There's one receptacle on each that serves to meet the code requirement for the wall on my left and the wall on my right. I do want to illuminate the fact that there are no receptacles on this wall because fixed in place cabinetry does not count as wall space. There's no receptacle above the bench, there's no receptacle below the bench. Now they're permitted by code, but they're not required. And that's an important part of the language and distinction that we have to make during the installation process at every step of the way. Permitted, but not required. 